risking their lives in the hope of a better future. Thousands of men, women and children taking what most of us would consider to be unimaginably dangerous journeys to enter Europe. In the last 20 years, it's claimed that some 16,000 migrants have died trying to enter the EU. Despite ever tighter border controls, migrants continue to come via perilous routes such as Morocco in North Africa. Paul Hackett reports. This shows the desperate lengths some will go to to be border security and get into Europe. At a checkpoint, authorities detect an illegal migrant trying to enter Spain's North African enclave of Melilla. Hidden by smugglers, this time he doesn't get through. It's the reason why Spain's tiny territory has become one of the most fortified gateways to Europe. Every year, thousands of African migrants try to breach Malia's formidable defences. Many are fleeing violence or war in their homeland. Others just simply dream of a better life. But most end up stuck here for years. The enclave is not part of the EU Schengen zone. Many migrants told us of human rights violations, especially in Morocco. Are there any problems with Spanish authorities? No, no, no. No, no, no problems with Spanish authorities. And the other side with the Moroccans? Over there, there are many problems, many problems. Recently, they killed someone from Cameroon. He was hit on the head with a stone and died. Over there, there are many problems. If you climb the fences, they hit you with sticks. They catch you and send you back. We're tired. On the Moroccan side, people are very tired. There's a lot of suffering. You can die and no one will know, as if you were just a dead chicken or something. People die in Morocco really easily. Human rights activists in Melia also say migrants often get brutal treatment in Morocco. They accuse Spanish and EU authorities of turning a blind eye. They treat them worse than animals. I've seen with my own eyes on the other side of the fence. At half past five in the morning, how they were, after having stopped some immigrants who tried to cross to the other side, with long sticks and big stones, breaking their legs. The screams heard at night, the screams of pain were horrifying. Since 2005, Spanish and Moroccan authorities have reinforced border security. Today, Spain's Guardia Civil can deploy a patrol along the Melilla fence within less than a minute. Despite that, Madrid's top representative in the enclave believes more cooperation is needed. This question, the problem of immigration, does not exclusively affect Melilla, nor does it exclusively affect Spain and Morocco. It's a problem which concerns the entire European Union, which Spain is a part of. The most important role that the EU can play, in my point of view, is to work together with the countries where these immigrants come from in order to fight migrant smugglers. Melia epitomizes Europe's migration challenge, a duty to protect the vulnerable on one hand and fears of an uncontrolled influx on the other. I'm joined by the European Commission's Director General for Home Affairs, Stefano Manservisi, and Morocco's Ambassador to the European Union, Menoir Alem. Gentlemen, many thanks. Director yeah. General, I've seen Europe's migration policy described as a political and moral failure. How do you respond to that? Well, I think that first, uh, the image that we have seen uh, is precisely our objective. Never, ever something like this. EU migration policy, first, is a common policy since few years. Second, we have to define not only the condition for entry and to stay, but also what the objectives that we want to have. And therefore, this is extremely difficult, in particular in this moment of economic crisis, where on one side we know that we need to have more migrants for our works and for our labour market, but at the same time, our societies are not totally keen or not totally, not totally used to live with this reality. <coughs> but the best way to address this is to 
have a credible legal migration policy and a credible mobility uh, policy. Ambassador, are you satisfied with the way your borders with Europe are ma managed? Those pictures show that it's a very complex issue. No, no, but my question is, are you, are you satisfied with the way your borders are managed? No. No, not at the moment, because there are several aspects when it comes to managing migration, on a global scale, a regional scale, and in terms of security. Director General, are you, are you aware of these human rights abuses, which are documented by a number of NGOs in Morocco? Yes, we are aware. And Has the EU condemned it for Yes, we condemned it, but more important, because, you know, to condemn and then to shift and turn the pages is not enough. What we have said, we said with our Moroccan partners, let's sit together and let's see what we can do together. We have recently uh, agreed on a on a mobility partnership political declaration which has one pillar which is about international protection where as uh, just referring to what the ambassador said where we recognize that there are a lot of things the readmission to... policy is also a uh, integral part i think of the mobility partnerships oui. readmission policy oui. being that any f Ill illegal irregular mi migrant caught in europe who says i came through morocco will then be deported back to morocco do you accept that Hello. It's one of the issues we and the European Union still don't quite agree on, negotiations on the readmission policy. For non-Moroccans, we say those who are in Morocco legally, who came in with a visa, or who have a residence permit, and who went to Europe for reasons I'm not aware of and are not there legally, we're responsible for repatriating those people. We have a responsibility to repatriate these people, because it's our responsibility. in general, that's not the situation. So, Sometimes it is. Yes. But for the others, those who use Morocco as a transit country, I say again, that's why I'm insisting on the need for regional cooperation. Because we can't take the responsibility alone for this kind of migration. But up until now, sorry, but up until now readmission agreements are a difficult and sticking point with a lot of countries. Yes. Are you going to push ahead with them? For example, with a country like Morocco, where you know that non-Moroccans have a good chance of maybe being treated badly and being caught in limbo in Morocco. Is it an integral part of your policy? Yes, it is, because it's part of our approach, which is called more for more. Uh, you know, what we wanted to ensure our societies is that we are able to open up a bit of our borders to ensure more mobility, but within a security. And therefore, you know, for us, the admission agreement is an integral part of this. But the ambassador Third said country, himself, it, it has to be more of a holistic yeah. approach. They can't do it yeah. on their own. They need the yeah, EU's help. Yeah, but, uh, Everyone must take their responsibility if we really want to find lasting solutions to this question. It's everyone's responsibility. If you allow people to think that Morocco alone must manage the way some countries, and I really mean this, at best allow these people to cross the borders, at worst, as is often the case, help them enter Morocco, we won't indefinitely be able to find suitable solutions. And then we'll be faced with pictures like those in the report. So, so there's no certainty that this mobility partnership is going to go ahead because you've got a bit of an issue here. No, there is a certainty that we agreed on what we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And therefore now we have to negotiate on what to do. But if we wanted to set up a, a regime which is credible in terms of rule of law, in terms of uh, enforceability, in terms of acceptability of our societies, everybody must be able to manage its own border. North it's Africa is one of your priorities. Yes, but, uh, no, but this... Uh, uh, this, uh, this political agreement on the future mobility partnership with Morocco is the first one Ambassador? with an African country. It's one of the issues on which we disagree with the EU. We, nations from the South, had the feeling there was perhaps a more global policy towards nations to the East. And maybe more discrimination and tighter security vis-à-vis -vis southern nations like ours. The second issue I'd like to talk to you about, you mentioned the humanitarian situation. And I've had the chance to talk about that with the human rights commissions at the European Parliament and various NGOs. 
There's this impression that Morocco acts as a policeman, which blocks access to Europe for those people. C'est un gendarme qui bloque l'accès à l'Europe de ces personnes-là. That's what you're mandated to do. Dans certains cas, bien sûr. In some cases, of course, we take on the responsibility of managing our borders. But I've often said this, those people, what are their basic rights? I'm talking about illegal immigrants, it's about respecting their choice. And what is their choice? It's to come to Europe. So you can't, under the guise of giving lectures in human rights, say, you must respect these people's human rights, but they have to stay in your country. But does that give police the right to beat them, to kill them? No. 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 Listen. Well, this is what we heard in the report. That person said there had been people killed. There were people killed on the other side too, in Melia. There were also people who died in some European countries. Dans certains pays européens. Briefly, it's obvious you're in a very difficult situation. There's no easy answer. How do you see this playing out? Well, I think that you know the playing out is. First, a real debate, prudent, without cheating people, uh, uh, in, in terms of what is our future in terms of, of migration. First point. Second point is to look at the borders, uh, uh, thinking about our experience. We have turned borders into a, a place of collective security, and therefore we have to do it. You know, therefore, this is the only way. It's a challenge. It's not a magic solution. But without this, Europe will maybe be more secure, maybe more inward-looking, but its competitiveness, its shape, its future will be less bright. Gentlemen, many thanks. Definitely a Thank thorny you. issue. You. Europe's external coastline spans roughly 66,000 kilometres, a vast area to secure. We want to hear your thoughts. Should authorities be doing more to tighten our borders or is better cooperation and dialogue with non-EU countries the answer? Our debate continues on social media. In the meantime, On the Frontline returns next month.